Welcome to another episode of The Rotation with Mike and John. That's Mike. I'm John. Thank you for tuning in today. Baseball is coming down to the stretch here. We got about three weeks left in the season. And Mike, it's been a great year so far. Lots of ups, lots of downs. But how's your weekend going so far? Weekend's going well so far. Uh, Baseball is, yeah, like you said, it's heating up. The divisional races are going to come to a close in a few weeks. And there's a surprising number of wild card and division races that are still up for grabs uh, with a few different teams uh, across the board. Uh, besides that, football's back, so that's nice too. But baseball season is heading towards the playoffs, and you know how much we love playoff baseball. And before we get into our Yankees talk, I just want to announce our affiliated partnership with Fans Idea. That's fansidea.com. As you can see behind Mike is our Cinco Squad jersey. You can, you can put your name, your favorite number, and then put your logo across the chest and on the shoulder. So make sure you go get your jersey. Oh, and Get yourself 10% off with Cinco Squad 10. Cinco Squad 10 is the discount code, and that's fansidea.com. But, Mike, let's hop into our Yankees talk. It's been a, a wild ride of emotion <laughs> over the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, it's kind of tailing off right now in the Milwaukee series, but the Yankees are nine games right now as of this recording on Sunday. Um, but what are your thoughts on this on the rest of the season? Do you think they have a chance? So, like you said, it's been wild. Uh, the the young kids came up and lit a fire, as you said a couple times, both here yeah. and on our main show, the Cinco Squad, on Thursdays at noon. Uh, it's they've lit a fire under the ass of the rest of the team. It's been great to see the energy they've been playing with, even in losses. Even in losses, like the Milwaukee games have not been great, um, run differential wise, but it still felt competitive which is nice to see after, you know, the long haul that this season has been. Do I think they have a chance? That's a very good question. Um, yeah, I think they do. It's going to take a lot. Yeah. It's going to take a whole lot. And it's going to take more than just them playing well. It's going to yeah. take other teams not playing well or beating each other up and things like that. Um, this Red so- upcoming Red Sox series is the most important series of the entire season. Like it's I, for me in any chance they do have, that's the make or break series. You have to at least take that series. If not preferably sweep it to put yourselves in enough of a good position to be able, cause you're not going to win out. You just, I mean, that's baseball. You're not going to win out. So you need to be able to absorb those losses to make and still be able to make the comeback. So yeah, that's what I'm seeing. I will, I will say though, like one of the things that I'm noticing is, the key key part of this Yankees team right now mm-hmm. that is letting them down is there's two parts, right? So there's Carlos R- R- Rodon, mm-hmm. Luis Severino, who's now out for the year and probably done as a Yankee, right? And the bullpen. Those are two main factors. So on on Friday night when they played the Brewers and lost nine two, it was a two two game going into the eighth inning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Loisega gave up three earned. And then Croc, I think I'm saying that in Croc. Crook. Uh, so, Mike, I think there's two factors here right now with the Yankees that are letting them down. And one is their ending of their rotation, mm-hmm. which is Carlos Rodon and Luis Severino, who is now out for the year. The other thing is their bullpen. Key bullpen guys that have been struggling lately. Jonathan Loisega in the last two games have given up five earned runs. I haven't seen something like this before from him. No. And then you have Michael, uh, I think his name is Michael Croc or Crook. 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 Matt Crook. Matt Crook. And he gave up four earned. So the Yankees were in both games, mm-hmm. what I'm looking at, mm-hmm. and until the late innings and gave up the lead. So in my opinion, it's it's got to come down to their bullpen. And if they miss the playoffs, they at least know what they have on the offensive side of the ball, right? You can get rid of a lot of guys. You can go trade for a lot of – that's what I was saying on the last show is that these young guys have now elevated to the point where you have an MLB roster hitting-wise. Right. You have to go get a rotation there. You have to go get yourself someone to help Cole up. Cole is burning through the seasons. He's playing phenomenal. 
Like he's had a couple bad games, but he's burning. You're just burning his arm. You're doing exactly what you did to the CC in the early after the 09 World Series. That's exactly what you did to CC. He just kept burning him out, burning him out, burning him out. In my opinion, these young guys are really great and they have a lot of high ceiling. So let them be on the roster next year. Start Austin Wells. I love Agashioka backing him up. Rote vet, not what I expected from him. You know, you got Barraza and Cabrera, who are spark plugs, in my opinion. You got Volpe, who's just got that, you know, boyhood smile that's just like, hey, I love being a Yankee. You know, in my opinion, you go in free agency, you bring back Bader. Where are you going to play him? I don't know, but he can be a bench guy, a key bench guy. Like, you bring back IKF, you bring back Stanton. You know, I don't know what you do with Stanton and, and, and Rizzo. Because it seems like Stanton's got a resurgence from these young guys, and it's hitting the ball well. Right. right now, it's just, in my opinion, for the Yankees, in order for them to make the playoffs, they have to sweep Boston, and they have to sweep Toronto. They have to take this last game in Milwaukee. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, realistically, they're nine games back right now. Uh, it's it's a very sh- tall task. Yeah, it is. But they got three weeks. They have some opponents in front of them that they can go reach, and I think they're good. But it has been fun seeing this. Like, over the last few months, I've been watching the games, and I just haven't felt like they've been competitive. And I think that's a perfect term that you can use. They haven't felt competitive in these games, even when they're down. Right. Like, now they're competitive. Like, you're seeing them get ahead in games. You're seeing them hit the ball. You're seeing them, you know, some pitchers pitch well. So, the biggest thing I see of the Yankees is they're just putting guys on IL left and right every other day. Yeah. You know, well, some things never change. Gone, you know, <laughs> Nestor Cortez is done. Like all these guys are just like, it's Rizzo's done for the year. Like it's just one after the other. They're just sending guys, you know, out for the rest of the year. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, some things don't change. No. Um, that always seems to be something that's one thing. I'm not going to say it's the only thing that's ever stood in their way winning another title since 09 but it definitely hasn't helped all the injuries the bad injuries they've had over the course of the last few years um yeah i agree i think uh unfortunately i i love luis severino when he's on but he's been so off and now with the injury issues i think he's done as a yankee good luck elsewhere i hope he gets another spot somewhere because he, he's his upside is he's very talented like i said when he's on that he's a, can be like a Cy Young caliber pitcher when his stuff's on. It's yeah. just anymore you're getting it on one every ten starts, and it's just that you're not going to win like that. No, Stanton. Um, Stanton stands out to me because I do like what he's been showing since the guys came up. Since the pressure has come off of him a little bit, that everybody's struggling. I think that's been something that's been weighing on the entire team is that nobody's hitting well, and so now I think. With the way you're constructing the roster now, you may be able to hold on to Stanton and live with who Giancarlo Stanton is. This is just who he is. He's not going to hit any higher than like 230, 240, but he's going to hit eight straight games of home runs and give you a presence in the lineup as well. And I think with the kind of guys, the young guys coming up and the bench guys you can bring in, you can kind of live with that. You, yeah. Because I mean... everybody has one. Yeah, I just don't see him as that type of player, though. Like, and I think the Yankees abused him, right? Like, they they abused him in the way of not allowing him to play the field, not allowing him to do things. And I think that's what got him hurt, ultimately, is him going out, sitting on the bench all the time, and, you know, saying, hey, you're going to be a DH all the time. That's all you're going to do. You're you're not going to go out and, you know, play left field, which he had a cannon of an arm. Like, I get it if you're David Ortiz and you're fat and out of shape and shit like this, but he's in the best shape in the whole MLB, you put them yeah. against anybody. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me why they wouldn't put this athletic guy out there. And then it's like, I get they're do what they're doing for Judge because of his foot, but like, I don't understand it for 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 Stanton. We'll see what happens over the next three weeks yeah. here. Um, it sure. should be an interesting season. But the best, the brightest part is that 2024 is looking really good for the Yankees right now. What they have to do is make some offseason moves, and one of the moves I would love to see is for Derek Jeter, the captain, either to be an advisor to the team and or a manager. We'll see what happens. I mean, I, at this point, the captain, the current captain, has has vouched heavily for Boone. 
And like I've said on many shows, I love Boone. I think he's a great, great coach. I think he's a great team pl- team player. I think he's a great – he knows the Yankee way. Yeah. You know, obviously he had a big historic <laughs> home run in the Yankee Stadium. Right. But I just feel like they need a new voice. And if it's not and he wins the World Series, I'd be so happy for Booney. But right. we'll see what happens here over the next three, four weeks and over the next year. I don't think they're going to let him go, but and I don't think they're going to let Cashman go. But what we're going to let go is a, of this Yankees talk and get right into our five takes of the week. Make sure you comment below and let us know what you think yes. of your our five takes of the week, but also your five takes of the week, as well as our Yankees talk and see what you think of the Yankees. If you hate them, you love them, whatever. We don't care. So <laughs> comment below, let us know what's go, what you think. But Mike, let's get right into it. What is your first right. take of the week? All right, so my first take of the week, well, branching off the Yankees talk, let's stay in the A at least. Uh, recently, the Baltimore Orioles became the first team in the American League to reach 90 wins, second team in the MLB behind the Atlanta Braves, to reach 90 wins on the season. And to me, this is a big statement for Baltimore. This is another notch in the cap of telling the rest of the league, we are here, we are here to stay, we have talent, we have young talent, we have pitching, hitting, everything we need to be contenders stop. It's time to stop overlooking the Baltimore Orioles because they are here to be contenders for the foreseeable future, which I think is huge for the organization given their struggles in past years. Yeah. I mean, the Orioles playing great baseball. I mean, they're playing as a team. They have good camaraderie and they're like, you know, a lot of people are saying, and like, why couldn't they do this with May Machado and Jones? They didn't have this young talent that they have. Right. And they keep bringing up guys. I mean, I believe holidays on the team now. Um, if he's yep. not, I think he's going to be eventually. He'll be on the playoff. Yeah. Will he be on the playoff roster? I don't know. I don't even know if he's playing currently. But I don't think he will be on the playoff roster. But he may be up with the team, kind of like what the Yankees did in 1995 with Jeter and the young guys right. getting right. that experience. Baltimore has a real chance to win the AL um, and go right through to the ALCS and go right to the World Series, in my opinion. They mm-hmm. have good pitching. Um, they're they're hinged by their their closer, but I think their bats are good. The crowd atmosphere is is phenomenal. At um, where do they play? Camden Yards. Camden Yards. It's it's it, anytime I see a game, the, the stadium is packed. Obviously, when your team's doing good, the stadium is going to be packed. You gotta see. It's just a good environment for Orioles fans. I mean, they haven't really had a successful season. Prior to this, probably 2012, prior to that, probably to probably Ripken was probably the last time they had this type of hype around players and in mm-hmm. that type of um, environment. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, they, they're going to be dangerous, but don't let the record be your only achievement this year is my, my right. thought, because the right. Dodgers had the best record in baseball and nearly broke the Yankees record uh, for of all time wins last year and ended up getting bounced out in the first round of their playoffs. So right. don't let the record be your only accomplishment this year. Get to the playoffs, get your guys healthy, and get in. let's see what happens. So um, definitely going to be an interesting, interesting playoffs. Yeah, for sure. What is your second – or first take of the week, I'm sorry. What is your the second overall take, your first take of the week? Redo that. Yeah. No, for sure I think it is going to be. What is your first take of the week? My first take of the week is Kyle Schwarber has fooled us all. You would think by these stats, he would be having a great year, right? So let me read this to you. 42 home runs, 93 ribbies, and 822 OPS, right? Mm-hmm. But he is batting his batting average is a 196. <laughs> so some stats on uh, his his uh, he has 113 walks and 181 uh, strikeouts. I don't know where that ranks him in 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 comparison to everyone else, but he is a great contributor when you want him to hit the long ball, you know, but. Other than that, he's been struggling at the plate, and I think he's been the the, the outlier for the Phillies over the last few months. Mm-hmm. Um, he comes up and hits, has big hits, right? Like over the last few games, I mean, he's two for three, two for four, one for five. 
you know, but a lot of them, you know, three strikeouts. One, each game has an average of one strikeout. So um, he's one of those guys that's either going to hit the long ball or he's going – he's kind of like Stan. He's going to hit the long ball or he's going to <laughs> – he's going to strike out and or walk. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, he's full of this all right now if you look at those stats right now. Yeah, uh, so quick research just done. He is tied for second in the league in walks, but also tied for second in the league in strikeouts. Makes so, sense. yeah, so yeah, it's it's <laughs> like you said, it's kind of like a third at, in home runs, I think. I believe so. Like you said, it's kind of like a Stanton thing. We always say it about Stanton. There are three outcomes to his bets. He's either homering, walking, or striking out. Uh, he's now fourth. Pete Alonso passed him. Yeah, so, still like I mean, top five in home runs is, but yeah, he so it's a great home run hitter. And again, you can he might be something you can kind of live with a little bit if you have the players around him. But for most of the year, for most of the year, the Phillies didn't, or at least didn't have the other players succeeding around him while he was either striking out or hitting a home run. So yeah, I mean, you right, you take the batting average off, he's he might be MVP. Yeah, but you put the I mean, batting average on, and suddenly he's. A middle of the road yeah, hitter. Yeah, exactly. But I think he's going to be contributing well for the Phillies if the Phillies end up making a playoff run. Yeah. Uh, which I think they're, if I'm not, if I'm mistaken correctly, I think he, they are in a playoff run. I think they're in the, the wild card game. That's, I mean, they're not going to win in the East. So, yeah, no, 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 no one's not touching winning. that. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I assume Atlanta's going to lock that up here in the next couple days or weeks. Yeah, Phillies are the first team in the, it's a wild card. So they're, okay plus four right now. So they'll make the playoffs. I think it'll be a key contributor like he did last year, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, he hits better. He hits a little bit. He seems to be one of those types also that steps his game up in, in uh, the playoffs. Yeah. So what is your second take of the week? My second take of the week is something that uh, you and I, or someone that you and I had discussed uh, a couple days ago, but didn't realize what he did. So it is Yoshinobu, Yoshinobu Yamamoto who is the supposed to be, you know, the next big, thank you. Um, that that. Thank you. I wouldn't even came in the ballpark of that. <laughs> no, so don't. I would have just, I would have just went right through like, Yoshi, I'm going to go though. Yeah. No, <laughs> yourself short. You wouldn't find. Um, yeah. So he is considered one of the next uh, guys expected from Japan to come over to the, Majors, a bunch of teams, including the Yankees, Brian Cashman, uh, team sent scouts or GMs or what or what have you, front office reps, to go view him over in Japan with the Oryx Buffaloes. Uh, and what did he do? I don't know if you saw what he did. Through he treated office. those scouts and GMs and, and front office reps to a no-hitter. <laughs> he threw a no-hitter when they came over to see him. So it's got me thinking – Yoshinobu Ma... See? I, I can't even do it sometimes. You gotta do it slow. <laughs> Yoshinobu Yamamoto is going to be the next Japanese star. Now, I I don't think, being that I don't believe he hits, he will not be the Japanese star of Otani level, but if somebody can get another like Masahiro Tanaka out of him as far as pitching goes, put on them. Because he looks like he is ready and willing to come over here and dominate for somebody. Yeah, I mean, like I told you the other day, I think he's a he's going to make a team very happy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the Japanese players have – there's only been a few that have let down teams. Um, right. You know, one for Yankees. I forget his, I forget his name even. Keigawa. Keigawa. He never really got off the ground. And then the guy for Boston, I don't, I mean, I think he's starting to come, come alive right now. Um, as a player, he's a hitter. He's like a fielder. So yeah, Yoshida. Not, not, yeah, Yoshida. He might. He end up. He's come on pretty hot the last couple of months. Yeah, I think he's the favorite to win AL Rookie of the Year right now. Yeah. So I mean, he's he's come on strong. He hasn't done anything spectacular, which is fine. I mean, but you know, obviously Ichiro and you know Hideki Matsui, you know, and and Shohei have set the bar very very high, right? So, right. You know. Let's let's look at it as a as a great tool. Like he's a starting pitcher. We don't need a guy to come in and hit and pitch. You know, so if the Yankees grab him, I'd be very happy because that's a yeah. fourth starter or third starter for them. You know, or he could be the number two. 
especially losing Severino. Nestor's on the on the fence, and you got to forget we still have Frankie Montas, and and then you know Rondon is. I hope it's not one of those things where you sign a big guy and he's just. Yeah. Um, if not, the Yankees need to stay their ass away from San Francisco and Oakland. To the Bay Area, yeah. The Bay Area is no. everywhere. <laughs> just don't. Um, just don't. But yeah, it'd be a great addition to any team. I watched. I watched the highlights of that that no hitter, and I was, he's got some good stuff. Got some good moving on his, on his fastball, and you know, you, you know, those guys can really, th- really throw the ball. For sure. What is your second take of the week? Well, we talked about this last week or a couple weeks ago. Steven Strasburg is returning. Apparently, according to the Nationals. They expect him in at spring training next year. That's why they canceled his retirement ceremony because they expect him to be at spring training next year. So apparently Steven Strasburg is not retiring. He is returning for another season as per the, uh, as per the Washington nationals. Hmm. I don't know if that's the best idea. I mean, uh, I can't not say either way, you know. So right. I, 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 if he feels like he's good to go and he yeah. wants to go another year, he more than welcome to. I mean, I'm not one to sit here and say to a player, "No, don't." If you feel like you're ready to go, and especially on a team like like the Nationals, who actually look pretty decent over the last few months, mm-hmm. and with all their new uh, newly acquired recruits and everything uh, mm-hmm. from. The Swan Soto deal, the Dodgers deal. A lot of those guys are starting to come up and play good baseball. Um, they got that one kid. Um, he played he hit he hit a trip uh third decker at Yankee Stadium. I forget his name. Uh, uh oh uh Joey Manessis. Yeah, he he's yeah, he's, he's great. He's... So I like they got here. a lot of young talent that I think they they need that veteran leadership. And I'm always a, I'm always opposed not opposed to it, but I'm also always if it's your time to retire, it's your time to retire. Like, yeah. you know, Trey Day and I always talk about that, you know, with players. Yeah, we love seeing them like Kobe and Jeter and everything. But at some point, it's time to, for them to go. And, you know, hopefully they will, uh, you know, hopefully he he's healthy enough to pitch a full season because it's fun to watch Steven Strasburg pitch. Yeah, no, Steven Strasburg, like I would love to see him pitch again because he's a, he's been a phenomenal talent, great pitcher, like consistent, like like I said, really fun to watch. It's just irreparable when I hear irreparable nerve damage that scares me for him as a person for his health. I wouldn't I would hate to see him push too far on the comeback attempt and do even more damage to himself. We'll see but, next year. We'll see. I mean, yeah. I'm, spring training is not the season, right? So right. we'll see next year. Yeah. All right, Mike, what is your third take of the week? Third take of the week. Stay in that NL East. And in recent in a recent game, Andrew Jones had his number retired by the Atlanta Braves, his number 25 retired by the Atlanta Braves. And I just wanted to say it is well-deserved and so is a bid to the Hall of Fame. As they said in the ceremony, Andrew Jones is a Hall of Famer. I mean, we've talked about this. We had this on the on Cinco Squad. Andrew Jones is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, he's he didn't get in this year, right? Nope. I forget what is this his first year on it? No, it's not. It's like his, but it's it's like his second or third. He's got ten years, so he's got plenty of time left. I mean, yeah, the guy is he's four hundred thirty four home runs, twelve hundred RBIs. You know, over. 1900 hits you know his batting average career batting average is i can't find it on this give me a second 254 which is not i mean i think that's hindered by the last maybe few years you right. know kind of took it down but i mean the guy is a, was a when he came out of the Braves organization like in the sense of it was just a fire sure fire firepower like he just came out and just dominated and he was a key part of those 98 99 teams that were really really good that should have made a world series run i don't think they ever won a world series or did they with him 
Yeah, I don't think they did. No, they didn't. He was a ro- he and Jeter were rookies together in '96. He missed them. He missed the Braves World Series by a year in '95. Yeah, that's right. It was one '95. Yep. So I mean, it was. I mean, it sucks, but I mean, you know, they never got a chance to win one. Yeah. But I think yeah, that that him playing for the Braves were, was a key component in left field. He, and then when he left the Braves in 2007, he was also, uh, a, you know, a highly talented. He want everyone wanted, you know, everyone wanted his bat. He wanted that that, you know, 51 in home runs and 128 RBIs that he got in, a, in his, um, I think his MVP year or his gold glove year. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, well-deserved hats off. One of my favorite players growing up and, you know, great to see his number get retired for the Braves. 100%. What is your third take of this week? So the Cubs need a way, need to find a way to re-sign Cody Bellinger and Marcus Stroman. Because this Cubs team is coming on strong, we talked about this the other day, mm-hmm. and they need a they need some sort of uh, whatever it may be to go and find a way to sign these resign these guys. They've earned it. Cody is dominating right now, and Marcus Strom is playing great baseball too. So um, it's not just one way. I mean, Cody Bellinger is batting three nineteen this year. If any other year, you know, prior. It probably would have won MVP, but I right. mean, you got Corey Seager, Freeman, Acuna, and Arise batting three thirty five plus. Um, but he's just hitting the ball well. He's seeing the ball well. He's he seems like he's having fun again playing baseball. There's not a lot of, not a lot of pressure. The, right. the Cubs didn't really have a lot of pressure, but yes, the they need to find a way to re sign these two guys. Agreed. Uh, I think it's very telling, not only with the success they've had with the Cubs, but it's very telling when multiple sources reported that Bellinger and Stroman at the trade deadline went to the GM and said, don't trade us after with all the rumors swirling about both of them getting moved, they went to apparently went to them. You told me this Mm -hmm. at the time and said, don't trade us. We want to stay in Chicago. And that's why I really don't think either are making it to the open market as much as their agents and, you know, advisors and, and stuff may say, just test your, you know, you know, test your value on the market. And then resign with Chicago if that's what you really want. I don't even think they seem to be of the opinion that I, they don't want to wait that long. I no. bet. I bet within the first opening, first two days of openings of like restricted free agent negotiations after the end of the year, I bet they sign because yeah, they want to be there, and that's what you want as an organization: guys that not only contribute on the field but want to be there. Mm-hmm. They want to be within the city in the locker room with the organization they're committed and that's how you win that's how you win championships and that's how you turn your team into i don't want to say a a dynasty because it's hard to be a dynasty anymore but a top flight franchise and stay well i mean there there are dynasty there are dynasties i mean you got the dodgers you got the astros who are dynasties i mean those are dynasties right now those are in the midst of consistently being at the top that's that is it. so I you know I, I agree, but I also want to want to make the point that the Dodgers and the Astros are a dynasty in a way because they have significantly been a dynasty. Doesn't just mean you win championships. Dynasty also also means that you're competitive every single year and you're contending for a World Series title. I mean the, the Astros won it last year. They were in it the year before. They missed the 2021. But we're in the ALCS. <laughs> they they won it in a nineteen or eighteen or whatever those nineteen, and then Boston won. And they won in seventeen. So they were they are contending. And they and they are dynasties, you know. So then the Cubs have the chance with the young group that they have with Dansby Swanson, Mark Strong, Cody Bellinger. Those three key guys, plus all the trades they've made to acquire prospects, they have a way to get a be a contender in that. Uh, division and there's not a lot of teams other than Milwaukee right now that are in the run for being that team right right? that's scary team so you know they have a chance to be scary but they have to resign these guys I agree 100% so what is your fourth take of the week 
Well, it's funny. Again, I seem to be on the pace of staying in divisions. I got an NL Central one, which is, to me, the Central is the most interesting race left because the Brewers are, are, are holding firm to that lead, but the Cubs have silently come back and are within striking distance. And I mean, I know there's only three weeks left, but three weeks can make a whole lot of a difference. And the Reds, if they're able to put something together, are also in content are still in striking distance to be able to take that division. So it's just an interesting race to mean be, not because, and then we've talked about it a few times, mm-hmm. this, the Cubs and Reds being such a surprise this year, where it's like with the Cardinals struggling at the beginning of the year, it was essentially like, oh, okay, well, the Brewers got this. Like, okay, the next most talented team, considered most talented team in that division is by far the Brewers. Everybody mm-hmm. else is kind of rebuilding. And all of a sudden, the Brewers grabbed the division, and then so did the Cubs and the Reds. And it's like, wait a minute, where'd you guys come from? Yeah. So I that's the, that's the race I am most interested in as we head down the stretch is that NL Central. Yeah, I mean, you know, here's the thing for the Cubs, right? They have – some good series to take control, right? Like Arizona, they're playing, you know, currently, you know, and they lost the last two, last three from Arizona, which is not good. Right. Um, you know, but they got Colorado, Arizona, Pittsburgh, Colorado, Atlanta. So, and then they have to end the season. So that's the five series are coming up, right? Mm-hmm. So quite frankly, they could take a series from Colorado, both of them. They should take six games right there. Atlanta is going to be tough, um, but yeah, they got to end their season with Atlanta and then a three game series at Milwaukee. So, which could decide might, the division, correct? But it all depends on how they do for the last next five series. If correct. they bring it within two games, the that Milwaukee series, you know, Milwaukee's just got to win one, right? So, and and then that they win the division. So you're right. I mean, um, well. That central is very close uh, and closer than we expected, I guess. Right. You know, because we expected the Cardinals kind of run away with that division, Milwaukee make a wild card run, and that was right. it. We didn't expect the Cubs. And I mean, if we go back to episode one, you know, we didn't expect the Cubs, the, the Pirates or the Reds, the Pirates or the Reds to be competitive. And, you know, I think it's a talent, it's a testament to the prospects that they're getting on these teams and the, and the young players. A lot of these teams are going young. Yes, we have the stars, but you're also going young and you're developing your farm system. And I think that's been a major key to the season is that a lot of teams are developing a farm system mm-hmm. and you see the the product on the field, right? You see the, the hard work for the last three, four years, you know? Yeah, for sure. What is your fourth take of the week? So, and this goes back to something we, we hit on earlier in the year, but I want to bring it up again because we are now at, towards the end of the year. There was better pitching in the early 2000s than there is now. And I think there's one key component. The MLB has hindered that. I think the MLB putting so many rules on the pitchers and putting so many rules in place. Now, I get you don't want pine tar on the ball or anything like that, but allowing taking away some, like maybe some grip, a uh, solution to help them, you know, throw better pitches and stuff has ultimately hindered the games, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. Back in two thousand one, I'll give you or two thousand. Okay, I'll give you. I'll give you the stats here. The leading pitcher in the in the of the league was Pedro Martinez at one point seven four ERA. Then was Kevin Brown two point five eight ERA. Randy Johnson two point six four. Today's MLB. We have Justin Steele at 2.49 ERA starting in the MLB. That's our, mm-hmm. that's the best pitcher in the MLB right now, ERA, ERA wise. Right. Blake Snell at 2.52, then Garrett Cole at 2.90. They're giving up more runs now because they're not allowed to control their pitches. And I, I, I think that it's weird, right? Like a lot of these guys are, and I feel like more pitchers are getting more hurt. And, and trying to throw stuff and throw more curveballs, sliders, what at, what have you, and, and getting hurt more often, that it's also ultimately a hinder of the game where it's it's literally one sided. It's a hitter's mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't seen. When's the last time we've seen averages like this? I mean, it's, they're just getting hits left and right. So, um, 
my fourth take is better pitching in the early 2000s, but I think it's ultimately because I think the MLB has pushed it towards that. And I agree. Um, you, I, I swear I hear more about more guys, both big name and small name, getting Tommy John surgery now than I ever have before. Uh-huh. And Tyler Glass now said it when it happened to him. He said when they when they first outlawed spider tech, right? Mm-hmm. Which was the big thing that supposedly Glass now used. And, right? Rumor is it's never been confirmed. Glass now used it. Cole used it. A whole bunch of guys used it. Uh, it's it's <laughs> a name brand that everyone used around MLB. That it's right. just, it was just us. Right. They they it, out- that's it. Yeah, so they outlawed that. He said the first, the day after his first start without it, his elbow hurt, and the Rays, after his second start without it, announced that he needed Tommy John surgery. He immediately yeah. hurt his elbow because yeah, he said, I had to grip the ball too hard. Yeah. And control it. I was a little on, on the fence with that because I'm like, okay, yeah, it probably was. That probably set it over the edge, but your elbow was always hurt at that point. But Well, yeah, I'm sure it was coming, but – it's it's the all of us like it just happened yeah i get and it it is a one-sided um it is a one-sided game and i think that's what the league wants because they want the excitement of all the home runs and all the big hits and high scoring games and things like that i really think that's what they want Mm -hmm. so you know maybe word to those out there that want to make the major leagues be a hitter don't be a pitcher because the league, the league doesn't is more interested in you not succeeding seemingly than you succeeding. Right. All right. Take us home with your final take of the week. All right. My final take of the week is Texas. The Texas Rangers better pick up some momentum fast because things are slipping away quickly for that team. Yes. Uh, they yeah, have they now are. dropped to three games back in the AOS, which is now led by the Astros, but the Mariners have come on strong. And I don't believe they are. Yeah, they're and they're a game and a half out of the wild card. Now, that doesn't sound so bad right now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they're only three games out of the division, one and a half out of the wild card. That's easy to make up. Well, they're four and six in their last 10 games, so they're not trending in a positive direction as far as winning versus losing. And as we've said, there's only three weeks left in the regular season. You're yeah. running out of time. So if you keep trending downward, you're not going to have time to trend upward. And all of well, a sudden, this seemingly this team that at the All Star break had almost every All Star starter, yeah, might not make the playoffs. <laughs> and and that was something we said about two weeks ago. And I and I mentioned is that to, I think it was a show I was just doing. You you were yeah. on vacation, and yeah. I mentioned that Texas was something, and they're not there. And that was two weeks ago, right? So now we're two weeks later, and they continue to slump. And now they went from first to third within a two week span, where Seattle now and Houston are taking the control of the division. Right. Um, you know, it, unfortunately, it's it, Scherzer coming hurt them. You know, he got hurt, and now we don't even know if he's going to make the playoffs. You know. I said it last week. I don't. I I think the Verlander and Scherzer yep. pickups were not were not helpful for the team because the team was already doing well. So I get what the Rangers were doing. Where is hey, we're great. Let's go get a great pitcher too on top of our great staff. But I don't know if that really helps. And I don't know if it's just on him. But the team is just not hitting well. They're they're making key errors. They're they're not. They just don't seem like they're playing with the same hype. And that's what we say. The dog days of August and, and July can get a team into yep. a slump that sometimes you can't get out of. Exactly. All right. Take Now you take us home with the final take this week, your fifth take of the week. My fifth take of the week is going to continue to hit on MLB and say how terrible of a job they have done uh, marketing their players. And I know I said this in the beginning of our uh, the rotation and earlier in the season. And, um, you know, we don't really have household names. You and I know all the names because we're baseball uh, fanatics and we love right. them. We love baseball. But if you're walking down the street and you saw Mookie Betts, you wouldn't really – if you weren't a baseball fan, you'd probably just say, oh, so it's just, it's just some okay. guy, yeah. you know, ball guy. <laughs> you know, so that type of thing, like, right? So – Obviously, Aaron Judge is probably the face, but 
MLB, it, here's here's my testament. If you ever see this video, is get 2024 right. Work out some deals with some with some TV negotiation and get this back on the road. MLB, I love baseball and I'm I'm a baseball fanatic, and this is something that breaks my heart because we're seeing a lot of people start to slip away from baseball because they can't watch it. Number one, number two, you're not marketing these players. You're not marketing them to the height that they were like the steroid era. We saw bonds, McGuire, Sosa, Jeter, A-Rod. I mean, Jeter wasn't part of that, but you know what I mean? We saw those, that era. we saw that era of players all the time. And you saw them marketed all the time. And you saw them uh, uh, on cereal boxes on everything. I know we're in a day and age, but, Let's get better with this. Let's get better. Let's get next year, like, really hone in on it because I don't think the game is – I think the game is suffering because, you know, people aren't going to as many games. You know, it's a long season, and I get it, but I think the MLB is really, you know, not doing the players justice by marketing. You have great young talent like Boba Shit, Flag Guerrero Jr., who's junior. His dad was a phenomenal Hall of Fame player. You have Shohei Otani, you got Aaron Judge, you got Mookie Betts, you got all these great guys that no one, if you were to say Boba Shet to someone that's just a hockey fan or whatever, they'd be like, I don't know who that is. Right. And you, you got to market these guys better, in my opinion. 100%. I'll draw a, kind of a connection with the WWE. You know how big of a wrestling fan I am. And you and I mm-hmm. have had conversations about that you got out of the product and you don't know the names anymore yeah. like you would have even before even if you weren't a big fan before you knew who john cena and the rock and triple h and Shawn michaels and all them are i'll draw the parallel to that because they've become it goes along with the conversation you and i've had about that which is they picked one guy it's otani yeah. otani's otani's everywhere yes He's everywhere because, oh, we got this two-way star, not done blah, blah, blah since Babe Ruth, all that kind of thing. And that's great. He should be. I agree. Like, market him, please. He's a phenomenal two-way player that's probably about to win AL MVP again. Market him, but market everybody else. Everybody has at least one guy. I swear, every team has at least one guy that you can market really well. Everybody. Yeah. Even regionally. They don't even market their guys regionally. That's what's insane. It, it, and, and it goes back to the all-star game. You can look at the all-star game roster and you and I'd be like, oh, I know that player. I know that player. Right, know that right, player. Right. But it used to be like, I read a lot of names to people who aren't baseball fans. Like, Oh, I know all four of those players. It used to be like Jeter at short. Uh, I can't even think of a good second baseman back then, but you know, you usually had uh, Tino at first. You had Paul, you know, like you can name an all-star yeah. roster and go right through the line. I'd be like, I know that guy. I know that guy. I know that guy. And now you right. look at the roster and you're like, who the hell is this? Like, right. and I just don't think it's, it's good for baseball. I mean, baseball is starting to slump away, especially now when the NFL start coming back, college football is right. coming back. NBA will be back and NHL will be back. You know, you have to do things. And I haven't even seen commercials for postseason right now. We're a month, we're three weeks away at this point, And there's no like hype around the wild card, but right. postseason or anything. It's just, it's flat. And MLB's got to do, you know, um, you got to do better. And and that's coming from a fanatic. And, and I'm being honest and crit- critiquing you guys because I love the I love the game and I love the sport. I grew up playing it, grew up uh, watching games every single day. You know, right. my grandfather and everybody. I, I just hope that we can get back to where baseball is one of the top sports. Me too. So, Mike, another great week of the rotation. Thank you all for sure. tuning in. We appreciate it every single week. We're going to be here throughout the World Series, and then we'll take a few months off until spring training comes back. But it was a great week. It was a great week in baseball. We got more great week in baseball. It's going to be a lot of fireworks over the next three weeks. So stay tuned to the rotation. We're going to be tweeting on our Twitter from Cinco Squad Podcast. Mike, any final thoughts before heading into the week? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how things change this week. Got those, like we said, interesting races going, and uh, let's uh, let's go baseball. I guess hopefully, uh, hopefully it's going to be a good uh, end of the year. How about you? Yep, absolutely. And make sure you guys go get yourself ten percent off at Fans Idea 
as you can see, Mike's jersey behind you is our Cinco Squad jersey with our logo on the front. You can also put your logo on the side. You can you get hockey jerseys, baseball jerseys, football jerseys, basketball, all kinds of stuff. anything you want. Sweatpants, hats, anything. Go get it, fansidea.com, Cinco Squad 10. That's Cinco Squad 10. We'll see you guys here next week on the rotation. Mike and John out.